I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we solve the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could figure out the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another problem for you to solve for next week's video. I really like this mechanism because it's got an example of what's called anchimeric assistance, where there is participation of the lone pair of electrons on some neighboring group on an adjacent atom. I'll highlight that part in just a second, but for now let's talk about the first step of this reaction. Importantly, the first step is going to be the classic holonium ion formation, where we have this bromine atom, which remember can be attacked by pi electrons to form what is called a holonium ion. So these pi electrons can come here, and remember that there are lone pairs of electrons surrounding each of these bromine atoms. So these pi electrons will attack the bromine, while the other electrons will come over to the other side. So this is going to form a three-membered ring, and it's also going to kick off bromide as a leaving group. So the product of this transformation is actually going to be that three-membered bridged ion, because now we're going to have three bonds to bromine, which is going to make it what's called a bromonium ion, and the rest of the molecule still looks the exact same. So at this point, we've generated this intermediate. And this first reaction is just a classic example from organic chemistry one. Now notice that, remember that this iodine, similar to bromine, also has three lone pairs of electrons. And these lone pairs of electrons are actually going to participate in this reaction. And this is the part that's called anchimeric participation, or anchimeric assistance, where these lone pairs of electrons will come in and donate at this position, which is therefore going to kick up these electrons over to bromine, giving us our neutral bromine atom. And instead, now what it's going to do is we're still going to have a three-membered bridge uh, intermediate, but in this case, rather than being the bromonium ion, it's going to be an iodinium ion. So the product of that transformation, remember now that we've kicked this over, we're going to have our bromine atom over here, and now we've got our three-membered bridged iodinium ion, which is now going to be positively charged, and now we have this as our next intermediate. And this can happen because this is such a large substituent, this iodine, that these electrons can actually participate in this reaction by being adjacent to this position. Again, that's called anchimeric assistance. And now from here, remember we lost a bromide ion, which can come in and attack to open up this ring. So remember this bromide ion now has four pairs of lone pairs of electrons which can come in and attack at this position, which will kick up these electrons and leave us behind with our final product. So once this happens, this actually generates our final product. Now importantly, when each of these steps occur, they're happening from opposite faces of the reaction. So the iodinium will come and attack on the back side of where this brominium ion is, and similarly, this bromide will come and attack on the back side of where this iodinium bridge is. And that's why we get the different stereochemistry where the bromine atoms are on the opposite side stereochemically from the iodine. I'd love to hear how you did in a comment down below. Additionally, for next week, I'd like you to see if you can come up with a plausible mechanism for this chemical transformation. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.